uh, recording. Good evening, sir. Welcome. And uh, it is my privilege. I'm not able to see yeah. this thing. So I have to re reconnect again. No, no, you're fine, sir. You're fine, sir. Okay. We're live. So um, it is our privilege and honor to have Professor TSS Rao. Um, uh, he is a professor of psychiatry at GSS Medical College, Mysore. Also GSS Medical College uh, and uh, Academy of Higher Education and Research. He is currently the director of the Fellowship of Psychosexual Medicine and Certificate in uh, Psychosexual Medicine run at that institute. Uh, he is the editor of the Journal of Psychosexual Health, a former editor of the Indian Journal of Psychiatry. He has authored over 24 books and chapters and uh, has 314 research papers. He is currently General Secretary uh, of the Human Sexuality Section of the World Psychiatry Association. Uh, he is president of the Karnataka Sexual uh, Sciences Academy, past president of Indian Association for Geriatric Mental Health, and both of his presidential addresses have been about geriatric psychosexual health. His website is www.tssrao.com, which he fondly likes to call Total Sex Solutions Dr. Rao. His wife is a former uh, HOD and professor of gynecology at the same institute and now a consultant gynecologist. And his daughter, Sumana Rao, is also a psychiatrist and has completed her fellowship in psychosexual medicine. With such an uh, illustrious career and so many accolades to your name, it is such a pleasure to welcome you uh, to talk today to us about aging and sexuality. Welcome, Dr. Rao. Um, Very good evening to everybody and uh, Nilima, I am really honored that uh, you could spare some time to see that uh, we can discuss out certain uh, issues. Yes, sir. Really, I'm really overwhelmed. I'm looking forward to this session. Yes, we have an exciting discussion ahead and I've had some questions come through as well. So, um, sir, we'll just uh, talk a little bit to the doctors who may be listening uh, because, you know, uh, one of the most important things that is currently happening, particularly in India, is that patients are becoming more and more aware of sexual problems, psychosexual problems. And their concern is that are doctors up to date? Are doctors uh, up to scratch with understanding sexual medicine? And should they be opening up to their doctors? How well will their doctors understand them? So please, could you tell the doctors in our group also about um, your fellowship in psychosexual medicine and who it's open to and why you began this enterprise? So let me tell you, of course, uh, when we are talking about sexuality, uh, sexual medicine, or uh, anything related to sex, one of the most important stumbling block is doctors themselves. Yes. The reason I'll tell you, the reason is, I have spoken to many of my uh, colleagues, may not necessarily be psychiatrists I'm talking here, but uh, physicians and uh, doctors in general. Yes. They won't mind asking, talking to people about uh, very private issues like whether you passed urine, stools and all of that. Yes, yes. But when the word sex comes, they feel it is something purely private. If I ask what actually you know, they, they feel, whether I'm doing much more than what is actually necessary, whether I will be hounded in the court and a lot of the related things, more than anything else, they feel that uh, it is not related to. I sometimes go overboard and tell every person we meet on this earth, they are sexual problem cases. <laughs> Yesterday, today or tomorrow. Yes. So if you go with that idea, you realize how important uh, this particular aspect is. Yes. When actually you look at even treatment, see one of the classic examples I can give because many doctors may be listening, diabetes. Yes. You uh, talk to the physicians, they say, this way people want to take medicines properly. Yes. They won't listen to our advice. They are not compliant. See, the, the whole issue, well, there are a few diabetics and maybe with, with associated problems with me. When you tell them that uh, sexual actually aspect may get affected, they become more complaint. Yes. See, suddenly they become conscious that, oh, I, I should uh, uh, neglect, I should not neglect this thing and I should be taking care of myself. That means ultimately a little bit of awareness in this particular area can bring about wonderful changes, both from the patient's perspective and from the physician's perspective. Mm -hmm. So that is one aspect. See, when we looked into what is actually the training available, 
absolutely we are in a very bad shape yeah to be frank with you just about 4 years ago jss academy of higher education and research earlier what was called as jss university it initiated this particular uh, program and to start this particular program we have struggled nearly 4 years my god the reason i tell you medical council of india didn't have this particular thing listed in their uh, this thing so they won't allow but then uh, you are trying to look at what can be done whether we can do through rci whether we can do other any other agency nowhere there is a course like sexuality related in uh, any of this uh, what you call uh, the central agencies so then uh, when we looked into all the parameters what were the lacunas in their uh, in, uh, dealings then we realized that something is not mentioned means we can start this course yes fresh course so that is the way this particular idea came and a uh, lot of our patients were there in this european uh, training programs and uh, we ourselves had uh, looked into many of these programs then we charted out uh, very specific topics and uh, we began what is called as a regular program that means one year the minimum qualification necessary for fellowship program is one year uh, this is mbbs and for one year they will stay the reason was that um, see many of that says actually we are exposed to lot of cmes in cmes what happens we are exposed to for a certain length of time one person one hour uh, comes and speaks and goes yes, it is not going to work. continuing medical education yeah ah, so then we realized uh, even if a cme of uh, two days or three days is done that is also not sufficient no there are variety of cases we come across varieties of issues are there and that particular confidence to get and more than anything else see uh, i have attended a lot of programs by gynecologists uh, but uh, urologists you are uh, you can look into that lot of highly specialized uh, category who conduct the programs and when they deal with sexual problems we realized very often they are trying to look at uh, from their particular rank so for a gynecologist there are certain specific things are there they focus on that for a urologist what he can cut and what he can set it right in fact they don't have many of the times the patients i am not blaming them everybody is very busy in their own uh, this thing but uh, sexual medicine practice what is necessary calls for we have to sit and spend some time yeah there is nothing like a uh, stop gap or a shortcut for uh, history so does i always believe uh, fellowship give doctors the skills required to address patient concerns so, from all aspects so all doctors are welcome all specialties are welcome yes yes all specialties are welcome and uh, that one year may be necessary because how actually one can feel first comfortable then how actually to go about uh, maybe history examinations and related things and then actually manage the case uh, on hand and uh, get that uh, confidence so from that particular we start there are two programs are there one is what we call as the fellowship in psychosexual medicine it is from the jss academy of higher education and research one year program and luckily the corona brought a uh, lot of advantages also Yes. Now it has become ninety percent online and uh, about ten percent uh, physical problem. That yes. way, yeah. earlier we used to have about two people or three people uh, admitted for the course. This time we have twenty-five. Yes, and you can uh, understand uh, there are eighteen from uh, psychiatry, MD plus various uh, positions, two gynecologists, two urologists. There is one dermatologist and uh, one endocrinologist. Like that way, there are few other branch people are also there. But minimum college is only BS, but they all part of this particular program. That's amazing. Certificate yeah. course is open for the people who are not medical. That okay. means, uh, say, clinical psychologists right. and uh, other related people. Because we had too much of overwhelming response. Almost now, around sixteen uh, of them are from psychiatric category only. Right. The remaining people are uh, psychology. Wow. It is going on quite nicely, and uh, now totally fifty-seven people are there in this uh, program. Wonderful. so patients are going to benefit hugely from a much wider base of clinicians who are aware of sexual problems that can be affected in many different aspects of patients lives you know whether you know and as 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 our population becomes older a significant number of our uh, population is getting older and they will naturally need clinicians who are understanding of sexual health because one of the things um we find is that 
you know, sexual health seems to be very highly correlated with happiness. So in your opinion, how is this integration, you know, because uh, of uh, physical health, sexual health, mental health, particularly, and, se and sexual health, you know, how, how does it all fit together? As a psychiatrist, what would you say are your experience with this, you know, in terms of happiness, as the population gets older and more affected with illnesses, they're less likely to pay attention to their sexual health. But, you know, with the example that you said, in, in, with that gentleman who was diabetic, can you give us some anecdotes from your psychiatry practice about how physical health affects mental health, affects sexual health and happiness? Of course, one uh, good thing has happened is we are all well aware what this WHO definition of health is. Yes, yes. That it is not mere absence of disease, but physical, emotional, uh, spiritual, uh, psychological, and in fact, sexual, all these aspects have to be all right. Because that mind and body, whether they are uh, dichotomous or uh, they are uh, one and uh, same, this discussion used to be there earlier, but now we don't have that particular real aspect. And we are all well aware, say, for example, when I feel uh, tired, weak, or uh, suffering from maybe fever, my sexual aspects also get affected. Yeah. Psychological health also gets affected. In the same fashion, when I am feeling psychologically upset for any reason, my physical health also likely to get affected. Yeah. So as far as that is concerned, we don't have any argument at all nowadays. So World Health Organization also has made this point very clear, and we are clear about that. The second point, whether sexual health is uh, an absolute necessity or not an absolute necessity, whether it is beneficial or not beneficial, yeah. which we are, I, I think we are going to talk about this for a pretty length of yeah. time today. Yes. See, the, one of the most important thing is if we call what we call as in uh, psychological terms or maybe even biological terms, they are called as needs. Yeah. Yeah. Among the needs, there are two categories. Are there. One is actually what is called as primary needs. See, primary needs means they are, they are all necessary for my very survival. Mm. What it means is, say, for example, I can't live without water, maybe yeah, air. I can't live without uh, water. I can't live without food. Yes. So without yes. this thing, we can't just survive. Yes. Unfortunately, the sexual needs comes under this particular category called as uh, secondary needs. Oh. But secondary need, though it is, the amount of power it has, it can overcome even primary needs to a great extent in yes. certain situations. Yes. This is one of the reasons, even there are cultures where people believe that uh, very stringent uh, punishments and uh, even death sentences and all of that. And even in those countries, still the sexual issues are uh, problems related to that crop of again and again. Yes. Not because of anything, it's one of the one of the very yes. strong and overwhelming, mm -hmm. overbearing power it actually has on everybody's life. So, see, Paramal, if you try to look at uh, WHO issues related to this, uh, what we call as the HIV and AIDS, Mm -hmm. See, the two things that actually brought about miraculous changes in our understanding of sexuality. Mm -hmm. One is a very recent one, what one can talk about, the arrival of sildenafil citrate. Oh, so that I sexual problem I can be treated. So everybody yeah. became well aware and uh, everybody started talking about it yeah. and uh, started uh, using it and uh, people are realizing the issues involved. Yes. But the other one is the HIV related. Yeah. HIV, see for example, at time was there when uh, WHO used to recommend if you can stop sex, everything would be fine. <laughs> it's all lots of then, problems. Then <laughs> uh, it realized, even if you are going to drop a bomb, till it falls on the head, people are not going to stop sex. Yes. <laughs> so, one of the things is actually, what one has to do is actually educate them. Yes. In fact, ignorance is one of the major common problem everywhere and the sexual problems are there. Sexual problems are not attended. Sexual problems, people don't seek help, not because of anything, because of the, only one word that ignorance. Mm -hmm. In many of the situations, it is actually the ignorance which actually the whole uh, issue, the problem toils down to. People very commonly say that they about something called as ignorance is bliss. Yes. It doesn't work here in this particular case. No, so, it's not bliss. No. In fact, we have to be aware of, educate themselves. One should take life in their hand and uh, manage it properly, appropriately. Quality of life is extremely important component. And as we are trying to talk about happiness. happiness. See, ultimately, if you try to look at whether somebody takes alcohol, 
Hmm. Whether it is somebody takes uh, ganja, whether somebody takes opium, yeah. and when somebody is talking about sex, yeah. this happiness center and sex center for all practical purposes both are same. Same, yes. They trigger the same areas in the brain. Yes. So ultimately, what precisely happens is people try to find uh, that happiness in so many things. We are uh, surrounded by so many interesting things, but unfortunately. these type of things which actually easily available you don't have to put on effort and uh, you somehow get high and all like that that spoils literally in fact uh, however beautiful the wife may be yeah if somebody starts taking uh, an opioid yeah in fact that can give much more pleasure to him not because of anything but because he doesn't have to put anything ah. see relationship you have to manage yes yeah. here it is an That's easy an thing you have to just yeah. swallow or uh, smoke or uh, inhale or whatever some method yeah. Yes. So when we are trying to talk about, see, there are two more other aspects are there. When you because you use the word happiness, <laughs> pleasure and happiness. Pleasure is easy to get. Yes, absolutely. This depends on the external sources. Yes. Happiness is something that is internal. See, for example, I have to, I have to be happy to be happy. Like, see, for yes. example, I have to generate. Yes. And uh, you talk about erotic feelings. You talk about the time spent with the partner. we talk about any social uh, meeting you talk about the discussion what we are doing yes all of this could be as much happiness giving as anything else for that matter yes and uh, so this is what actually we are trying to look at yes so men particularly in our country um i think abroad as well because i've noticed it in uk also when i was working there the word menopause and sex is very is not taken together it's like two contrary things are happening also what happens that once women enter their 40s and 50s they kind of finish that their sex life is over very small proportion of women will continue to remain you know nurture their intimacy in a, in a couple relationship um they often think oh now child bearing is over the kids are gone whatever what is the point of having sex now this is very typically a female thought men don't think like that you know i have very rarely met men Uh, for whom sex is not on their thoughts or sex is not on the cards they never entertain such thoughts so mm. so can you um, from you know you've done lots and lots of research and a lot of your research is on aging and sexuality especially in the indian context which is very unique and very commendable because you know it's for so many so many different kinds of topics in our country so many different subjects indian research is always lagging behind so in your experience in the research that you have conducted in indian scenario um, what is the difference in the attitude between men and women towards aging and sexuality and how is it affecting intimate couple relationships in india today beautiful in fact uh, if i start talking about uh, research statistics and all that it will be boring yeah i can now uh, <laughs> pass it along all these type of things uh, nice to uh, <laughs> what i will uh, like to tell you till here at uh, this juncture is we need to look into what we call as uh, developmental sexuality how we actually progress boy and uh, well because when we are trying to talk about uh, sex in the elderly uh, sex in the old age what we learned in the earlier days going to matter significantly ah uh, how so, uh, you brought the second issue what is called as men and women Mm-hmm. See, starting from the very early age till very late age, what man needs is actually something called as female, and it is moving more than sufficient for him. <laughs> Got the point? Yes, yes. <laughs> Many men in the elderly group actually may have landed up in problem, which I am going to talk about as a later part, okay. just in uh, one or two lines. Yes. See, when we try to look at uh, developmentally speaking. see one important thing many of we indians are missing is actually sex is a taboo and uh, should not be spoken about it should not be discussed it should not be the matter of uh, any discourse this is one important uh, major problem mm-hmm. and as a child what it is the learning is what parents are trying to do yeah in the western country and indian if we try to compare there is a world of differences there and uh, many of us actually when we go there we for us it looks like a uh, very different world and uh, difficult to cope up for some of them and when they come to india they feel literally how inhibited a culture can be in fact one of the classic uh, examples yes yes 
we have some more other related maybe if you go to middle east and other countries it may be still more uh, different uh, thing altogether india is actually something where a lot of things are happening and uh, happening in a very fast way uh, in fact revolution is happening in indian context what we can uh, talk about uh, today i had a psychiatrist friend from tirupati and i had gone to a hotel for the lunch with him mm-hmm. and uh, on the other table there were two young girls who were uh, having uh, beer actually okay nahi what i'm trying to tell things have changed now in fact yeah. now people uh, look at, in fact that, that to think that in a big restaurant and uh, two girls sitting and uh, drinking beer it, it was not happening at later days and no, all because now because you're always mysore is this little sleepy town down no, in fact everything is so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> so things are changing and things are changing rapidly but unfortunately what is happening is what we have been uh, trained what we have been made to believe and what is really actually happening there is a world of difference yes it is actually quite shocking for uh, quite a few people it works out. yes yeah i'm so to make uh, this elderly sexuality understandable let me start a little with uh, very briefly with, uh, see how this man and woman uh, issue starts say if you try to look at very early age you will forget when you come to adolescent the kinsey what he did to study in 1950 and 1950 to publish papers in fact they are uh, relevant even today okay no further research has happened which has contradicted this findings to a significant extent yes what was spoken then is applicable even today right and what he spoke not only about adolescents he even spoke about elderly people also okay whole lot of things what he spoke there are few things what we have learnt in a different fashion now but all said and then concepts are almost uh, same same okay see the sexuality in a girl starts much earlier yes two years at least three years earlier than boys that what we yes. boys would call puberty yes. entering yes. puberty yes but when you try to talk about anything sexual hmm. boys are three to five times more active than girls yes see somewhere around especially that, in that uh, uh, especially ah, in the year they are they're ah. much more so, likely to discuss um sexual conquest and achievement we are all well aware that boys chase girls and a lot of such things what we used to talk about yes, yes. this is one of the very typical uh, story somewhere around 35 it is supposed to match right oh wow this is what i think okay <laughs> man and woman but you would have thought that by the time they got married some sort of exchange would happen so at 20 25 this would have happened Okay. If, if if we are trying to look at what matches man and right. woman, okay, okay, it is around thirty-five. Thirty-five. This is one of the. Say, for example, I practice in a place like next to Mysore, around forty kilometers away, Mandya. Uh-huh. This is one of the rural agrarian uh, community. You see, the marriage happens between uh, a maternal uncle or uh, yes, yes, the boy is much much older than the girl. Yeah, girl hardly knows anything. Yes. then what then what happens when girl knows what about the sex this this fellow is already out no you you got the point <laughs> i think that may also be another reason why uh, the older man the more mature man becomes so much more sexually attractive to a younger woman because he's got much more experience or he's perceived to be a little bit more knowledgeable than the boys of our own age ah that one but there are a lot of other perspectives are there for that <laughs> this is uh, uh, because in the close relationship they have to marry or the property right. will go off to others and uh, known from the earlier age mm-hmm. there a lot of other family bonding is yes. there so this girl hardly knows anything and uh, married off to a man who is 10 to 12 14 15 years older yes. and uh, at that particular age in fact uh, her interest is almost minimal to nil yes. when she is actually mature enough and she can understand when she demands this person is already out so yeah. if you try to look at uh, sexuality how actually it goes say after that 35 somewhere around 40 42 you look at man there are a lot of things happen because of which in fact his libido starts coming down okay he can be quite libidinous all through the life yes even say for example uh, uh, man around 86 years old having uh, wet dreams and uh, 75 plus actually uh, remarrying and in fact yes. happily living yes. like happens. they're all reported happens. figures are there happens yes but, but unfortunately because men women go through menopause but nothing like that happens to men 
oh nahi 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 okay so man happens lot of things okay happen. okay ha that's what i am going to yes yes tell us so somewhere around uh, that uh, after 45 50 and all like that the man's libido starts coming down okay. for three four reasons one is age factor itself mm-hmm. what he was doing at 20 what he was doing at 30 what he was doing at 40 he cannot do that at uh, age of 50 maybe at 60 yes This, this I am not talking negatively at all. I am no. going to clarify these points a little more uh, later. And uh, that is the time men are uh, already stuck with either alcohol, smoking, and yeah. other related things. Yeah. That will undermine his uh, libido to a great extent. Yes, absolutely. Over and above diabetes, hypertension, um, so many other arthritis, and in addition to that, medicines actually what he yeah. takes. lots of side effects of medicine not everything i have one beautiful diagram i always put it that up. it means this thing come, keeps coming down as and as he ages but you look at the woman see as far as the woman is concerned all along evolutionary if you try to look at the burden of uh, trouble with sex has almost always has been on the woman okay any community mm-hmm. anywhere whether you talk about animals you talk about uh, human beings mm-hmm. the burden of uh, sex is actually in fact it is there on the woman and uh, when we was talking about so children of the separate and hate so what do you mean by what, burden i'll tell you what the burden is mm-hmm. the 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 in fact if you can put hiv and the children of the city the second and third revolutions <laughs> the first revolution is actually the arrival of oral contraception oral contraception yes yes absolutely this relieved the woman from the risk of pregnancy pregnancy yes in fact oh, what i can say arrival of oral contraceptive pills is the, the day the women were liberated from so many aspects related to what we call our uh, we being sexual yes so it separated the burden what i was being to talk about from being procreative ah uh, yes. so this, this particular division that happened brought about a remarkable changes otherwise what happens is anything sex means is actually in fact pregnancy and uh, a lot of that is handicapped and once you have delivered the baby the nurturance and lot many other things actually yes. the man can go about a uh, whole round the world with lot of things but a woman stuck with the uh, house inside with the baby and uh, yeah. multiple yeah. babies uh, the burden yeah mortality associated with pregnancy also the mm-hmm. second one there are hormones in the female body what we call as estrogens and uh, progesterone yes see estrogen is a receptive uh, hormone yes progesterone all in its own right it can be little painful hormone also yes also <laughs> in that but overall this estrogen progesterone some of they have been treated as inhibitory hormones okay i'll come to that in fact if we ask a question little later yes. i'll tell you why they are considered as inhibitory hormones we'll come to that point to a little while later so they were trying to hold on a woman from uh, flying off for various reasons okay they were uh, somewhere around 40s 50s what happens is her estrogen and progesterone which were actually considered inverted comma inhibitory they are less yes. now whatever little testosterone is there it is relatively higher level of testosterone than yes. what it was earlier yes yes although it is decreasing is relatively higher yes so this is what actually liberates the woman see somewhere around 40s 50s what happens lot of families are on married 25 years 30 years 40 years now they are talking about uh, various fights various uh, incompatibilities uh, even thinking about divorce mm. many other such things come up around 40 so you, you will be surprised to know See, they were living for together for twenty, thirty years, and all. Now, why they are talking about yeah, uh, divorce? Suddenly, and, the bomb is bursting. <laughs> this is what precisely happens. So, there is a relative increase. See, for example, in case of woman, it is a rising graph. Yes. In case of man, it is a downhill course. This is where. So not all. You are saying what you are saying is that not all menopausal women or not not a significant no, 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 of no, 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 no. are getting problem with libido. They are changing. see whenever we are making some comments generalized though never be for all practical purposes they are also we have to understand the exceptions will always be there for many of the rules yes yes exactly so but what i am trying to tell you by that particular standard or parameter 
all menopausal perimenopausal or postmenopausal women should have been highly sexually active exactly that's what but i was look at the figure, my next question was going to be exactly opposite <laughs> but we seeing the opposite <laughs> ah, if you ask me the question next i'll tell you why it is opposite why is the reason, opposite uh, why the reason opposite is this is psychosocial issues right somehow the females have been trained from the beginning in many of the indian families that sex is a taboo yeah. it is actually a duty what she has to perform yes it is for uh, bearing the children and uh, the, the, she should have uh, she should get the son in fact this is one of the most important thing actually or at least definitely children and they have to like the uh, family and various things like that so all along the whole emphasis was on that this being dirty that yes. this being done as a duty yes. and this is has no particular role to play in that it is a man's world and man's job to do whatever it is and whatever he does whether he is uh, she is the only wife or if he has another affair also yes. in fact she should go along or bear with the particular things like that majority of these things actually have been uh, spoken about and we are all well aware mm. so it is actually primary cultural psychosocial issues rather than anything else okay of course regarding the the research studies what we have done yeah see i am very happy to tell you that uh, the sexual practice guidelines from indian psychiatric society almost about 7 years ago we had brought it out then uh, geriatric uh, psychiatry in that geriatric sexuality i am one of the authors for uh, that what we did and now in the coming year we are going to release something called as clinical practice guidelines and uh, law and sexuality issues okay they are also very important in great detail yeah. Uh, yeah. related to that particular area yeah. Yeah. See, what we have tried to do is make the people understand that this is one of the extremely important aspect we have to understand uh, the physiology developmental issues uh, the psychology Uh, biology all these aspects related to each of these things in very clear terms and by chance in fact we have a case for uh, 50 plus and all of that how actually one should go about sir in fact when we are trying to talk about division of, of the age the sir. who classification is uh, very clear mm. so for but for like the Hello? common man like the common man i have mm. some friends i have uh, patients also whose husbands um they are dealing with menopausal women right and this menopausal woman has gone off sex she feels like she has finished doing her duty now you know she has brought up the kids she sent them away now she is looking at, you know the marriage is done the grandkids have arrived and uh, she thinks that trying to be sexual is a big burden for her and many times they become angry and resentful now this also has a significant impact on the psychology of the husband the partner the intimate partner and i'd like you to um so talk a little bit about this kind of behavior that or this kind of thinking that happens to women the impact that it has on the intimate partner and therefore on the couple relationships you know at this time of life um, and what should women be thinking or how can women change their attitude towards sex and sexuality so that the relationship the couple bond is not disturbed because remember these people these individuals who have been joined in marriage have invested a significant amount of their life in this relationship if sex is so important for happiness and well being and i also teach in my course that sex is just as important for the woman for her pelvic floor health you know it's not just about satisfying the man it's also important for her, for her physically what kind of attitude shift do women need to have in order to you know nurture this couple relationship and not kind of you know so that the the male partner the husband doesn't feel like all the different psychological problems that come from this doesn't happen i'll start with uh, one uh, example mm-hmm. so i was thinking a couple and uh, one of the things is actually uh, he is not getting the uh, as much interest with the wife as much possible and uh, of course other interpersonal issues also were there mm-hmm. and one of the important point what he was mentioning sir i like my wife to take bath every day and uh, dress up very nicely and uh, when i come home i want to see the wife in a very pleasant mood and uh, very sincere 
later when uh, this couple therapy was going on we brought this issue for discussion so this is what actually is telling what uh, then wife's comment was very simple sir please tell him i am his wife not his girlfriend <laughs> got the point i got the i'm point, actually i am his wife I, i don't like this attitude you know why why do women perceive that the girlfriend when, you, when unless you have a tag of girlfriend is only when you are supposed to look beautiful and feel sexy and attractive and if you are a tag of wife you are supposed to be frumpy and unattractive I, this attitude shift has ah, to happen that, 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 why that, can't that, the that, wife that. think that look you know i it is my responsibility also to keep the spice in this relationship beautiful this is what this is what actually i am driving on the point many women think that now i am married and uh, that is the end of the story in fact yeah. i am uh, in a relationship he is going to take care of and the relatives are going to take care of and uh, this is one of the reasons he married such a beautiful nice girl exactly and uh, one baby he considered to be a drum another uh, baby in fact totally out of shape hardly bothered about uh, keeping oneself in a uh, fit and proper way you see the the whole issue is see the question what you have asked is actually very long one there are multiple dimensions there for yeah, that yeah yeah i know so, all of the questions oh, today sir i know <laughs> you said before that each question that we have today could be a one day conference for you <laughs> but i just no. just for our audience so that they get an idea of the depth of this issue and how it affects uh, aging and sexuality and why this attitude change is required urgently <laughs> extremely important so see as we were trying to tell see as far as the men are concerned see men uh, men like variety yes women like variety see men like uh, freedom women also like uh, freedom uh, for man it is an adventure mm. but unfortunately see what basically happens many women are not trained to be in that particular fashion yeah of course nowadays what we see in some of the western countries or maybe some extent in one in our country women trying to keep themselves in a proper shape or maybe we talk about makeup or other mm -hmm. things but the important point is actually you go to the village side you go to the middle class families for many of the things see it is taken for granted that uh, things are fine yeah. that is uh, yeah. very important change yeah. uh, yeah. that actually yeah. there is a formal limit about particularly now sir every morning when like you also may have noticed but nowadays especially when i go for a morning walk i see like 80% of women are fat they have huge bellies and both husband and wife they walk the belly comes first and then the person comes yeah. this too absolutely this is one of the see there is a, one more coolidge effect you have heard of this term coolidge no, effect no sir c o o l l i d g Coolidge. Oh, Coolidge effect. Okay. The Coolidge effect. See, this is one of the story written in many of the uh, sexual medicine textbooks. Actually, uh -huh. uh, he is, if I remember right, the twenty seventh president of uh, United States of America. Okay. And he and his uh, family, they are on a uh, tour of a barn. They come to that uh, point, and uh, the madam's party is there in the front. Right. They come uh, to one of the barns where uh, the caretaker explains to her. madam this uh, particular uh, hen he can have sex uh, 100 times per day yes i remember this she tells you tell this to the president who is coming yes, sir. so when this uh, uh, mr kulish party comes there he says sir madam wanted to tell you this uh, and can actually have sex almost 100 times per day yeah then the uh, president has With the same uh, chick or with the different chicks? Different chick. <laughs> It's a hundred <laughs> different chicks. <laughs> so there are a lot of uh, issues are uh, involved in this whole uh, uh, process. Yes. So, so, so coming to see, for example, sex is uh, based on a particular premise, mm. and this applies to our brain also. Yes. What that premise is or the dictum is, use or lose. Yes. See, this is the premise on which actually it works. Yes. as we are trying to tell very clearly the not the sexual health means in fact keeping the one's body the pelvic health and what you are trying to talk about these are all extremely important things and people have been not told that this is actually important is yes. one of the 
one of the major uh, mistake that has happened so far mm -hmm. and this particular uh, idea that uh, in fact now we are making them aware is one of the very significant step what i can uh, believe see developmentally speaking of course in case of men and women there is a uh, wide variety of differences are there not because of anything see for psychological terms if you try to look at for a man it is actually like a challenge mm. win over see for example uh, uh, patao how i can do this particular thing to this particular girl yes there is a challenge involved there is an adrenaline rush is there i feel uh, invigorated i feel mm. excited about all this thing. yes it's a conquest see, the day, uh, conquest the day we, they they get married hmm. the whole uh, this thing in fact a lot of ladies comment sir this man was behind me in fact i have seen medical students uh, when they have got married and all like subsequently they have come sir this fellow used to wait out of outside the class till my class is over Yes. but now i am married this fellow hardly bothered about uh, he doesn't show no chase <laughs> any interest yes. absolutely uh, i been mean, uh, left to myself yeah, why yeah. this actually men change so much immediately after marriage and the way uh, the various aspects of that again the multiple reasons may be there one important reason biologically speaking psychologically speaking socially speaking all the three areas we can uh, touch upon see when you are trying to talk about biology among all the things one important say earlier we should talk about testosterone we used to talk about uh, hormone like estrogen and progesterone mm. we, we uh, even today we talk about uh, dopamine yes. there is an executive neurotransmitter serotonin is the mood related uh, neurotransmitter which actually functions each of these things we can discuss little uh, later there is another one and this is necessary at least in case of the women as an absolute necessity for orgasms also mm. what we tie the orgasm and this particular molecule hormone what we talk about oxytocin, oxytocin. gynecologists were using plenty maybe even 3 decades ago if you open the textbook and read among the all the effects oxytocin being useful in case of orgasm hardly any mention like that is there any yeah, of the books yeah, yeah, yeah. it's only that last about 2 decades or maybe 3 yeah, decades yeah. what we are uh, trying to look at yeah. see oxytocin makes a lot of uh, difference in both uh, men and women and it is present in plenty and it is present in plenty maybe to a great extent more than actually what a man has mm. that is one aspect of it and it has its own purpose in case of a female mm. but for uh, when you are see for example when you are talking about sexuality i always try to divide the whole area into three areas one is what call as the intimacy related aspects mm -hmm. the second one is called as sensuality related matters yeah the third one is actually the pure sexual uh, physical related matters yeah yeah see when you are trying to talk about uh, oxytocin and effect what we are uh, trying to talk about mm -hmm. it is absolutely necessary for what is called as bonding yeah uh, feeling the pleasure of the company yeah and uh, the pleasant feelings the warmth of the body see any romantic situation that warm Yeah. Yeah, one of the very classical example we give is uh, say you are traveling in uh, maybe you are mumbai you know the best buses and uh, you are sitting there and one nice beautiful sexy lady comes and sits next to you that mere touch can give an electric shock type of sensation yes. <laughs> this is one of the things what we i might have uh, spoken about that that electric shock sensation what we talk about is oxytocin based mm. but unfortunately the tolerance for oxytocin develops very fast yeah i always say sir varabal i am uh, while putting on this particular suit or i realize that i have put on this suit. maybe another about a minute later i don't even realize that it is actually yeah. i am wearing that particular many of the dresses and all what we wear that initial uh, that excitement at the, at the end of uh, one minute two minutes three minutes five minutes yes actually it is not there unless uh, you uh, uh -huh. so the tolerance develops very fast and what precisely happens see at the time of marriage what happens a man and a woman and you ask them to hold the hand for uh, seven feras yes beginning it is very exciting yes. at the end of seventh fera the touch sensation goes off yeah so <laughs> for the man to get the same type of sensation you have to bring another woman there actually not okay. this woman yeah <laughs> you see the uh, the whole issue the oxytocin related effect and testosterone man is having plenty of testosterone in the body maybe three times four times more than actually what is necessary for it mm -hmm. and what is this testosterone is about 
testosterone is about adventure adventure aggressive territoriality okay. and yeah. the whole mm. lot of things in fact uh, see you, the women are nurtured by oxytocin flow maybe to some extent associated estrogen progesterone man is uh, raised by testosterone and uh, it in fact it brings you to focus a lot of things yeah. for him sex is uh, more the casual more easily obtained mm. variety actually he seeks excitement he tries to find in all given situations however beautiful wife may be the other wife looks much uh, other's wife looks much better mainly because yeah. the uh, the green the other side is much much uh, nicer yeah. looking so uh, many of these type of things in fact what we find is related to this particular fact one is actually our biology and our hormones the other one when we are trying to talk about intimacy see the uh, see even if you look at the brain the man's brain and woman's brain they are quite different in uh, yes. functionality yes sir in fact it may be very surprising for uh, some of the public who, who may be watching this particular program so the man's brain is about uh, 150 to 200 ml bigger than woman's brain mm-hmm. by always say that 150 to 200 ml is made up of garbage <laughs> what i can uh, try to compare the man's brain is like a desktop size is big okay capacity is small and the wrong connection can happen very easily <laughs> woman's brain is small because it is much more evolved and uh, it is much more refined and all of that it is almost like laptop ah. it is smaller in okay. bigger capacity and the chances of it going haywire is actually much less <clears throat> and man's brain doesn't work properly and sometimes it gets into so many other difficulties not because of anything because of this cross connections and what is that cross connection it is actually the sex which raises it again and again in multiple ways yeah. acceptable non acceptable is not the issues but he has to satisfy and that's why the whole lot of difference that particular thing comes so because in such a situation i mean um <laughs> in menopause we talk like 30% of women who go through menopause can develop depression de novo at menopause men also suffer with psychological problems and they can also go through depression and anxiety because of not just andropause but because of how their wives are so at this time sir when depression is such a big issue and i have lost a couple of friends uh, because in the in the menopausal years due to this problem um how should uh considering the even, even psychological effects of um uh, depression and loss of sexual desire uh, loss of intimacy closeness because depression can affect all of these things and in how should couples plan or prepare for something like this what should they do to be able to keep their love relationship uh supportive uh and kind and understanding for each other as they age okay yeah, yeah. straight away rather than asking i take again again little uh, round about way to come to the point <clears throat> see the, uh, the uh, we are all going to age there is uh, no question on uh, that particular point but uh, you ask one of the banker to come and talk to you he will say you must plan your retirement uh, issues when you are very young yeah <laughs> you cannot plan a retirement at the age of 50 60 and all of that exactly by the time it is already too late yes so something should be planned much much earlier so there is one uh, particular message this has a very big meaning actually but that is one of the important messages is the second point is we can be happy in the end only if we make our life uh, secure comfortable and uh, psychologically we are prepared for that yes see many of the times see for a girls uh, example if we try to take menarche mm. a mother has taught her what is this actually and explained to her educated her this girl is likely to face the world much better fashion compared to somebody who suddenly is uh, oh, there is a bleeding blood there is that and uh, mm-hmm. feeling terribly uh, out of menopause is also though it appears that too slowly and most actively may talk about many women are not prepared for this whole process mm. that is one aspect so they have been as in the beginning itself introduction we were trying to talk about many of the times what we have uh, 
spoken to them is actually sex is actually something bad it should be only as a something to keep the man happy otherwise he will go astray and you have to cooperate and there is no other alternative the third point is much of the life goes in managing the life you have a daughter you have a son studies uh, till they get the job see in western country even by adolescent they are quite independent that way in our country boys never mature in fact uh, <laughs> mama's boys <laughs> uh, all through the life they are taking care of uh, 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 actually and uh, um, women also in fact uh, they have been told that so many other responsibilities are more important than this particular uh, sexual can create quite a bit of uh, difficulty and socially speaking we are all well aware that uh, after a particular age they are uh, not sexually to be active at all is it even to think in that particular line mm. it is actually something wrong bad and all that mm-hmm. though body speaks something they have been trained to in fact i am um, i can quote any number of patients who have undergone uh, hysterectomy yes hysterectomy means that at the end of the female uh, sexual uh, life altogether like that how can anybody think of sex after hysterectomy that means womanhood means uh, the presence of that particular aspect yeah. is absolutely yeah. necessary yeah. so this type of social and uh, psychological and uh, cultural aspects dominate the woman's uh, life in a great way yes added to that <clears throat> see for a, one classic example i'll give you the mm-hmm. fantasy is the food for our uh, sex yes the passage to, to fantasy, fantasy yes. is one of one of the extremely important point for uh, see as a man i can close my eyes and uh, i can uh, see the picture of 1000 uh, girls coming to my mind without yes. much difficulty no no, no no you ask a woman to the same image you fantasize in that particular fashion have you tried any time doing that i am i am quite good example what can, what will happen it, but i've been trained i'm lucky i've had training like, for over 15 years like, <laughs> i'm lucky if a woman you ask her to fantasize she will fantasize about husband only yeah yeah husband wearing shorts husband wearing lungi husband yeah. wearing uh, pajama <laughs> husband wearing pants yeah yeah she cannot get aroused with that particular thing no i'm not telling you she should even think of something even if she about it even if she thinks about it and you are asking her she won't reply because that is one is program and think second. of anybody other than the husband is wrong <laughs> ah the one of the in fact the female uh, sexuality is such that it is made up of guilt 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 yes yes in fact only after marriage only i realized how precisely it uh, operates yes. in fact i am a married and man guilt is only going to the difficult job very wasteful emotion but guilt. very big and part guilt see for example feeling guilty for 100 things mm-hmm. even something they think about it then they will do other 10 uh, different pujas and uh, so many other things to get rid of that particular yeah yeah oh, see the, the the fire or fuel for our uh, sexual uh, energy vitality many of these things what we were talking about that something actually missing in lot of uh, females mainly because this capacity one is inhibited basically mm-hmm. the second one feeling absolutely literally guilty about anything if they can uh, fantasize <laughs> they have a particular problem that need to be attended yes, yes. so this leads to a lot of difficulty and uh, this is one actually what we find so when we are trying to talk about uh, menopause perimenopause and all of that added to that depression depression this is one of the example what you gave see depression can worsen this particular feelings of guilt in a terrible fashion yes we yes. thought of something long back mm. i did something which is actually not uh, yeah, right thing yeah. to do yeah. i did uh, in fact this is the particular age quite a few ladies actually they come out with an idea that actually they have done wrong things and feeling sinful guilty yes. Yes. thinking of suicide and all mainly What because something over. happened 18 yes. years ago 20 years ago the, the 30 years ago these are all extremely common among the yes. female sex there is another dimension and added to that if you are uh, treating it is fine if you are not treating that depression can be having quite devastating if it can start as a small episode it can become a worst possible scenario can become chronic and uh, what we talk about uh, suicides and other things particularly after 50 60s and all yes. extremely common among uh, women actually yes yes so and uh, coming to men 
they go through same like menopause in case of a female mm-hmm. except that we don't have a menstrual cycles and yeah. things like that yeah yeah and all the parameters for andropause if you try to look at there are about eight given yes. seven are related to the depression only yes there is only one last parameter which is there what is called as the level of testosterone in the body yes except for that almost all are related to depression only okay but man and women men and women differ in how they actually react to this yes yes if a man is feeling weak he feels his libido is coming down his uh, interest in sex is coming down what he will do he will become more adventurous yes he tries to go and prove it uh, somewhere ah, he tries you know, to prove it am i still okay goes to your past you he goes for okay? uh, the yeah, yeah. he goes ah yeah in case of woman yeah. it acts quite differently yeah in case of man it acts exactly opposite to the mm-hmm. what actually the woman is thinking about yeah so man is actually yeah. going out and saying let me see if i'm okay with other people and what the woman is saying let him show me if i'm okay or not <laughs> <laughs> so this intro uh, interjection and uh, feeling guilty about feeling sad about suffering as part of that these are all very precise stories what actually we have seen in case of uh, many women feeling adventurous Uh, not yet 40 in fact there was there was a movie actually in one of the hindi movie as we might have seen somewhere they become very adventurous yes. they seek different partners they seek variety and they seek different techniques and not many other things and if you try to look at the, the woman in the house she feels very absolutely uh, flabbergasted uh, why this particular fellow is behaving like this yes <laughs> and she tries to avoid him or uh, in fact this is what actually leads to a lot of uh, social complications what we see in this uh, yes yes of course uh, menopause and when we are trying to talk about uh, both the cases in case of woman and in case of man we have a lot of uh, psychological uh, education to be given to them socio cultural uh, myths and misconceptions what they have we need to remove and biologically speaking and uh, this is what is actually necessary sometimes see in case of many women when they are going through some of this uh, menopausal or uh, even the changes in uh, sexual behavior and lot many other things many gynecologists even today get carried away with an idea that uh, hormone replacement is actually something bad something should not be done yes and they are so much worried about so the complications related to this and not being uh, helping them uh, overcome this are extremely common very common and uh, i think one of the education what we have to do is actually make the women aware uh, gynecologists aware yes. that uh, they have to change their mindset and attitude i think you will be a much better place in explaining <laughs> yes. uh, we are so, a really good discussion uh, last week <laughs> so one thing that happens around this time um, many couples they either becomes like when and women become single a lot in their 40s and 50s either because of widowhood or divorce or separation many reasons and um, although for men it seems to be like unless they are suffering with problems like erectile dysfunction or something but it appears to be that men have an easier time being single than women do so can you touch upon the role of masturbation in women to maintain sexual health in as they get older Forty okay. centuries. Beautiful. See, see, uh, we we had one uh, big study on uh, almost around five hundred plus women right. who were married, staying with their uh, husbands, and we were trying to know, know what actually is happening in certain aspects. And one of the questionnaire was inhibited uh, sexual behavior assessment questionnaire of Masters and Johnsons. Okay. this was one of the question right there are a lot of questions are there in that uh, particular area mm-hmm. i am not talking about elderly i am talking about uh, uh, young ladies young there are um, many there are almost around uh, 18 different uh, parameters on which actually we were making assessment there were few things how many women masturbated you know you, the, you will be surprised to know the number 32% women reported they have masturbated sometime Okay, that's higher than I would have thought. Yeah, higher looks like no. Yeah, and look at these; they are not representative of the general population. What I am trying to talk to you: these are all well-educated ladies, 
were there uh, lions club rotary club and things like that right right that means this particular category is actually a little elite female They're category who had yeah. education and uh, they were aware of 32% and you will be surprised to know of which only about 12% women mm-hmm. were reasonably comfortable about masturbation okay so the 30% around the 20% of the day doing it they yeah. were doing it and feeling guilty <laughs> all of the ladies were feeling guilty if you try all to look at all of them were feeling guilty oh my god <laughs> of them only about 12% of the ladies were reasonably comfortable i masturbated or it could be all right and all of that see that you will be surprised to know these particular figures and yeah, uh, if you try to look at your figures uh, in the western countries available there are uh, there are a lot of ladies have uh, done uh, research on this particular uh, area yes, yes. they they talk about 60% 70% 80% see even in western country still there is a lot of this there is a amount of them there is in but you look at masturbation figures for the man yeah that even on the very early age 98% of the men masturbate yes and 2% are telling lies no no telling lies you 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 got it yes yes that is the type of figure <laughs> so so let us come to the uh, women and masturbation and that's this particular uh, aspect see just about 3 uh, years ago clinics of uh, north america came out with one uh, meta analysis related to what is happening as far as the women are concerned okay one of the idea is actually there are quite a few women who are uh, anorgasmic mm. frigidity and all some of the terminologies what we used to use and all mm. that but then they came out with an idea a woman what we basically call as anorgasmic or uh, frigid and all what we talk about no such condition exists mm this is not if a maximum stimulation is possible yes yeah. 100% of the women can be taken to orgasm yes yeah. it's only that some women need a little higher level of uh, stimulation and uh, yeah. the range of things actually okay there are a few more uh, uh, extra points are there. with fantasy alone mm-hmm. see for all masturbation fantasy is necessary yes women can reach orgasm with fantasy alone was anywhere between 1 to 5% okay fantasy alone that Not means so when we are talking about uh, women in general the figures quoted the fantasy which is absolutely necessary is actually somehow lacking in uh, the among the women this particular mm-hmm. idea they don't make it only around 29% that means say one third that means okay. 30% of the women mm-hmm. will reach orgasm in intercourse situations okay pino vagina intercourse okay <clears throat> and and coming to see what we basically call with touch mm. with touch alone a woman can be taken to orgasm okay with touch alone women can be taken to orgasm what we basically call self touch mm. or the touch from the partner mm. can make wonderful changes in fact this is what we say and with the use of vibrator or mm. in certain sort of sex toys which yes. has that particular yes. i was going to ask you that yeah. question also so with the vibrator mm. 100% of the women can be taken to orgasm that 100% word may be little uh, too much it may look like for all practical purposes all the women can be taken to orgasm it is possible this so is the this is really important sir because you know for so many years we have been told that oh you know so few women will ever experience an orgasm women don't experience orgasm they don't talk about orgasm so actually this is kind of breaking that myth and saying as long as you can stimulate a woman enough she will achieve orgasm and it kind of opens up the possibilities for a lot of women to experiment and now sex toys are available i recommend them even in my practice and how i mean i think women should be empowered to be able to use their touch and sex toys to allow themselves to experience orgasm so i'll go one step ahead and i'll tell you hmm. see for example all the female sexual problems which are inhibitory in nature hmm why i am telling this say for example a term like hypersexuality or mm. this that and all people some people may be using in some different context majority of the problems of the female sex you talk about uh, sexual aversion disorder 
you talk about uh, arousal related disorders you talk about orgasmic disorders majority of the female sexual problems are actually inhibitory nature right so the only way to actually treat all these inhibitory female sexual or uh, related uh, sexual problems is by training the woman in masturbation masturbation and learning orgasm and orgasm is a huge it, impact even on the hormonal balance more and more absolutely. in learning new things about orgasm the benefits of orgasm absolutely i tell you see paramal we actually what we do is there are when we are trying to look at uh, intensive sex therapy means involves uh, maybe something like master johnson's sensate focus exercises and all this mm-hmm. see sensate focus exercises are nothing but making the woman aware of see there are women who have never seen their uh, naked body in the mirror because uh, they don't want to see they don't want to see they see only yeah. flaws yeah they I have a friend who, who was recently on my uh, on the one interview she says you know what nilima we are now women have gone into the stage where we look better with clothes on than clothes off which means that you know the uh, the previous even motivation to look in the mirror about you know what kind of figure i have is my waist still okay that even goes away as you age you know you don't like the old body you know how it looks in the mirror much <laughs> so but when see when you try to look at uh, uh, the implication of that see unless you love your body and your uh, yourself you can never love another person actually like yes see the, yes. one of the basic minimum requirement for happiness is yes. we have to love our own now uh, what we have yes. whatever we have the, uh, the uh, precisely so problem starts there yeah. so when we talking about sensor focus exercise even therapy maybe later we back in this question may be different fashion that's what the whole training is about making the woman understand her own body and when we try to talk about the cerebral the whole body what we are trying to talk about is one aspect of it there are hardly women who have seen their genitals vagina how it looks like in fact the whole idea is actually it is something dirty one should not look at it one should not touch it and one should not do anything yeah, but so it should function when you put it under stress it should function that is such an antithesis <laughs> this present so the see me only function is something should go inside i have so many patients sir they don't want to go through sensate focus exercises because they are in such a hurry to get to intercourse <laughs> so when we are emphasizing on sexual intercourse and when man cannot perform and all what we talk about is related to this particular aspect also so the one of the whole important thing is why why masturbation is important what i'm trying to tell yes. a woman aware of her own body aware of her sensations she can be one of the real master for the man to help her actually how to go about yes so the, the, the whole process in sensate focus is actually in fact yes. she can be one of the important guide for him yes. actually how, how actually one should go about they do and another the, the, the question that somebody asked about aphrodisiac they do say that a woman who is confident in her body is one of the most powerful aphrodisiacs for the yes. man <laughs> but what about the woman <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll say by, by when you try to look at the sexual response cycle man and woman actually they differ to a great extent see man is very fast on the trigger he sees something interesting he is aroused ejaculation also happens very fast and we are all well aware there is something called a refractory period but as far as the woman is concerned see as one of the sexologists from mumbai only dr vital prabhu in fact i have heard his was few of the lectures yes. he used to talk about stri means istri is tell stri no no you see a man man is like a candescent bulb that some woman is coming there is uh, switch is on immediately yeah. but there are tube lights in all the other aspects of life but women are tube lights as far as sex is concerned okay <laughs> and uh, istri means uh, the concept is like this you put the plug on it takes its own sweet time for the uh, that iron box to get yes. hot it... <laughs> and when you remove the plug still it is very hot still it is hot it so this difference from the man and woman the one of the major differences in where people have documented this type of difference and um, many women don't reach orgasm in fact for many of them Yes. something entered something went off and something happened in fact at that way if man is actually an early ejaculator or a primitive ejaculator she doesn't even she's just even just getting ready by the time everything might have been already 
this is one of the reasons again over what precisely happened so when you are trying to talk about masturbation the idea myth related to one has to just get out of it yes and uh, the whole sex therapy what we are trying to talk about is based on this particular training the woman in masturbation yes whether she masturbates or the partner helps her in uh, masturbation mm -hmm. and this particular process to reach that there are different different steps actually what we try to yeah yeah it's wonderful so any tips you can give to, for couples to spice up their uh, love life how to make their bedtime spicy again uh -huh. of course extremely important that um, sex is one of the very important aspects and of course and another just just a corollary to that you know as they get older they want the bedtime to be spicy but also to maintain the privacy and boundaries <laughs> some tips on that sir okay so before I, uh, those uh, concluding uh, like what are the things one can do and all of that see many of the times in our culture we respect elders and uh, for the elders to be happy first they have to plan their own life in a different fashion see uh, as i told you i practice in a place called uh, where agrarian setup is there mm -hmm. and uh, many of the times what happens this uh, joint families uh, properties divided mm. properties given off to children mm. and this old man and woman are left with maybe on half acre of the land or something like that and there is no uh, income financially uh, they can depend on and assuming that children will take care of me they will give off and uh, 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 the daughter came and she yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, to give off and all the various things like that this is not the way to plan the life at all no no you want to be happy in the later part of the life you have to have your own independence Absolutely. how much money is necessary for your independence at all yes. you have to plan life yes. properly financial planning and, uh, extremely important that is one aspect of it second one one should keep oneself active all through the life extremely important now i am retired you see by you will be surprised to know say in a state like kerala the retirement age was 58 years for the Many of the time, the man's life starts at uh, the around that particular time. Yeah, yeah. By the time fifty-eight means you are actually retired. Retired. You 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 might have been retired from the, uh, the government job, but you are capable of doing so many things. Yes. yes. Keep yourself engaged and active. This is one of the most important. Yes. See, once we uh, relax and, uh, and relax means I am not telling that they should not relax. But what I'm trying to tell is actually you take the relaxation from the life itself means you land up in problem. Yes, yes. Lot of engine, lot of people die within the first two years of so-called retirement. They just give up. <laughs> that is that is one aspect of it. Third one, we are all age associated with that. We are all likely to have uh, diabetes, hypertension, uh, joint problems, uh, various things like that. One of the important point why see why diabetics develop a whole lot of sexual problems. by hypertensive the whole lot of sexual problems see these are not the illnesses one should be scared of there are treatments available there are few things which we need to do we have to do it mm -hmm. there is nothing like the vulnerable diabetes has come and i don't take treatment means every day with a high blood sugar you are spoiling your body to that extent yes that is uh, one of the one of the strongest advice is go and meet the doctor you is taking insulin see this is one of the just today uh in the hospital see the, the uh, his blood sugar level is actually somewhere around uh, 340 350 mm -hmm. wife uh, the, this thing uh, having problems the uh, the whole issue is doctors have advised he has to take insulin but he says i do uh, why, uh, sir once we ta start taking insulin all through the life i have to take insulin he is taking that tablet he has to take all through the life but he doesn't understand that with that blood high uh, blood sugar high blood sugar is likely to land up in problem so whatever problems if at all you have there are few lucky people who may not develop hypertension diabetes problems at all mm. but by chance you have developed there is no other alternative you take medicines properly mm. you do good exercise and you do eat uh, control yourself properly in fact that brings about a wonderful change mm -hmm. i'll tell you one word about exercise why it is important uh, when you are talking about prevention or uh, very happy life see if a man does 20 minutes medium level exercise mm -hmm. there is a particular hormone called as dha yes dihydroxyethylamine 
dihydroxy ethyl amine is the father molecule for uh, in fact not mother molecule for estrogen testosterone progesterone almost all sex hormones actually following up after that if a man does about 20 to 30 minutes medium level exercise at the end of third week they have noticed there is increase in almost about 25 to 30% increase in the dhc value what it means is so we have to keep our vigor vitality energy initiative motivation and majority of these type of things you cannot think of any other antidepressant other than exercise itself yes if you do a medium level moderate level exercise regularly Are you are almost yourself from a lot of problems i give it to women also ah, so women the same also. rule applies to the women also yes. dha found in both man and the woman yes. the same hormones it actually well, responsible for so many of the things in life. diet diet See, not only for diabetics diet is one of the extremely important so many of the times even in depression somebody might be depressed eating less but still they put on weight mm. not because of anything but their physical activity has come down and whatever they are eating is more than what is actually necessary that's what actually precisely happened and in the women there is a extra added this thing many of the time women handle their stress by eating more mm. one of the classic example you for, there are man and woman and she fought with the husband what she will do she won't eat you know she won't eat so long this fellow is there in the house yes. that fellow goes out means immediately they will empty the whole fridge and uh, eat it up and this whole thing about eating food. chocolate chocolate is an aphrodisiac <laughs> dark chocolate <laughs> or chocolate in general is that not so, all wine is an aphrodisiac <laughs> grapes all so sugary people, stuff so the food the exercise these are all extremely important things and you take care of in the house see many of the times it, it may be joint family or even in a single family where one daughter and uh, uh, one son when daughter comes or son comes or uh, when son and daughter in law come there are two bedroom house in mumbai and all the situation will be still worse yes uh, in fact even in some of the peripheral areas if you try to look at with due respect son will occupy one room and daughter will occupy one room and this buddha buddy will be thrown to the hall yeah please see you maintain your independence and privacy as much as possible That's because possible. they are extremely important things yesterday i had one uh, patient uh, they have a daughter who is somewhere around 14 or 15 years old husband and wife they have about uh, two to three bedrooms actually in the house but this daughter sleeps uh, along with the parents ah. see by many of the times one of the given that there is only one daughter <laughs> see these are the things in fact a child whether a son or daughter from the parents it should get separated by around 5 years or 6 years yes like they have their own privacy and they should sleep separately it is a it is an embarrassing situation both for the girl and for the parents also yes and what precisely happens is ultimately the life gets disturbed when actually they are not there that time you have to find some time various things like that that can lead to quite a bit of difficulty sex is something which is uh, use or lose don't ever stop it see i can tell you the men who don't masturbate and when uh, there are actually some studies available it could be how much uh, scientific if a man can masturbate around uh, 21 times per month the chances of he developing prostate is very much less yes one of the reasons is actually in fact uh, we have in our country the myths that uh, loss of semen is equal to loss of energy mm. loss of vitality and in fact one of my phd thesis on this dot syndrome yes dot syndrome refers to many people have this myths and misconceptions related to this particular idea mm -hmm. and not that uh, what we have done work this particular aspect is princhi uh, and uh, one of the things they try to retain they don't masturbate mm. and uh, more uh, they feel they are preserving energy that vitality what they believe actually leading to whole range of difficulties what actually there having and one of the most important is the irritation of prostate and uh, prostate multiplies and that is what we basically call enlarged prostate and the things yeah there. yeah coronary artery disease see many of the coronary artery disease people want to die not because uh, they, Uh, yeah, anything 
but because anyway they can't perform sex it is better to die like that <laughs> that is a whole lot of anxiety so we have to change our picture the idea what we have related to this particular aspect retain the energy vitality see in fact this is what we call as sensuality sensuality is something actually which makes us happy yeah makes our partner happy yeah i'll tell you one story i was doing post graduation in uh, national institute of mental health and neurosciences and one of the senior colleague of mine was from mumbai she was there and another colleague was teasing her see your husband uh, i saw him uh, coming on the road and he was looking at all the other girls her comment was more hungry that much better <laughs> that's <laughs> wonderful that's amazing <laughs> and then how how beautiful uh, that particular statement absolutely, is absolutely absolutely any woman they don't want the man to see anybody else yes. they see the, the whole this thing he has to feel hungry yes he has to feel hungry they see the the, the the whole issue women are very suspicious they don't want him to look at somebody don't want to talk to somebody if even if you talk to somebody they are highly suspicious they create a whole lot of uh, scene at home but all these type of things can actually boomerang or trouble uh, for the woman yes. rather than anything else yes in fact when you have a given freedom men behave much better fashion than more you try to control yes more hiding and more uh, secretively more uh, problematic things actually is likely to do yes so this is one of the very important uh, component so sensuality is see taking by applying sand you use, use of uh, certain types of foods uh, the dress actually what they wear uh, the makeup what they put on each of these things are extremely important one is the self confidence and the uh, it remind you about you were going to talk a little bit about aphrodisiacs also i i saw yeah. you mentioned what you eat so you will talk you will touch on that also okay well, the, the the important point is hmm. now science has uh, come out with an idea that aphrodisiacs means uh, there is no such magic drug anywhere in the earth that can be called as aphrodisiacs that is one important point great many of the times uh, what we have seen some of the aphrodisiacs are money itself money position yes. power power uh, 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 your personality all of these things are aphrodisiacs only in fact uh, the the partner is one of the best aphrodisiacs actually available for either man for or the woman yes. so both have to invest energy on this particular uh, aspect there are few things is available when we are talking about anything cognitive enhancers or what we basically call nutraceuticals which can uh, increase circulation in certain areas mm-hmm. see the same circulation which goes to the brain it goes to the genitals also yes man and woman hardly any difference actually in almost all these areas yeah. so any of these cognitive enhancers can be fine fair enough but when you are trying to talk about uh, something say for example somebody has uh, eaten certain food a uh, non veg food i feel more uh, sexually active these all are based on our own uh, experiences or hypothetically what we understand that way if i do this i will be like this if i do that i will be like this say for example uh, a woman with a big breast would be more interesting so these are all the things actually which are there ingrained in the head absolutely we need to get out of it anything and everything available to you can be made into something very interesting if uh, both of them can sit to discuss talk and among that communication is one of the most important thing yeah what i need rather than being see uh, assertiveness is totally different from uh, demanding or uh, creating problems one above one uh, assertive and uh, request for in fact all the things can happen in a very nice beautiful uh, fashion yes, yes. so this is one of the very important thank you so okay, much there are uh, we are uh, really nearly we finished our time actually we've gone massively over <laughs> time but it has been such an interesting and exciting discussion i could just carry on and on chatting i'm sure you could as well so sir, is it okay if we conclude uh, just Two, Absolutely two, fine. Two, Keep two, your sexual life as active as possible, and yes. that's the only solution which can uh, take you far. So, what is new and exciting for you in 2021, and how can people find you? One is important thing is 
as you told in the beginning itself now there is research happening now there is a uh, extra interest that has come up into this particular area and to be frank with you uh, md thesis in our department at least about five major thesis work was on actually the female sexuality wonderful and the key that i am married to a gynecologist that way we work together and uh, my daughter is also interested in sexual medicine and she is psychiatrist so somehow in our house but my wife was uh, she was a cultural shock when she married me actually <laughs> i have a library which around 13000 plus books wow always when my daughter was born she used to tell this books actually and all like that the daughter will get spoiled what will happen to our uh, family and various things like that i still remember my daughter was about 5 years old and we were watching a tv when some romantic situation in one of those uh, serial incident came my wife immediately got up she wanted to put that particular tv off her she wanted to change uh-huh. the channel so my daughter telling immediately to her no 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 it is interesting let it be there <laughs> so, so we have to get out of this idea that uh, boys are different girls are uh-huh. different how we bring them up so these are all extremely important as far as the female sexuality is concerned now there are few newer drugs have come say flibanserin in case of uh, women uh, glomerulonide in fact this is one more other newer drug which has been uh, there related to the orgasms and all of that but they are all purely some specific work actually they perform overall what need to happen is actually the change in our attitude our perception the way we attribute and things like that so this is extremely important one last message many men believe that women are made for work 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 <clears throat> many men would be earning lot of money but they don't keep a cook or somebody to help her out she has to get up in the morning cook food go for office come back and cook food that is not the way wife should be taken care of give her free time give her freedom give her education give her uh, financial uh, <clears throat> strength she can make wonderful changes in the life yeah, yeah. because there's a joke man woman magic exactly yeah, works joke that women <laughs> men expect angels you know on earth they want their wives to be angels but they don't realize that angels <laughs> don't live in hell you need to create heaven on earth for her <laughs> good good thank you so you'll find dr rao on uh, so your email is tssrao19 at yahoo.com and sir's website is www.tssrao.com Uh, please uh, get in touch and if you're a doctor who's listening to other one is totalsexsolutions.com is also fine they can reach through that please do remember <laughs> please get in touch with sir and do uh, make it a point or uh, encourage your uh, colleagues to study psychosexual medicine and incorporate it into your practice and if you're a patient listening please be heartened that your doctor will definitely be somebody who is um, trained and who understands that sex- your sexual health is of just as much importance as any other part of your health and that aging and sexuality is something to be celebrated thank you so much dr rao it has been such a and give the number also phone number ha you can uh, read my phone number also that way if anybody wants to contact any time most welcome so you can tell it <clears throat> i don't have your phone number with me right now 9898 9898 4528239 so 9845823998452 9845283298239 wonderful thank you I, so much i can be contacted any time till 12 o'clock in the night absolutely <laughs> comfortable <laughs> great thank you so much sir thank you thank you everyone for listening thank you thank you good night thank you